Oh. Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 21 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. So uh, I, I got a couple of requests in the uh, comments and so I decided this episode we're going to talk about wine springs um, and the coil winder and some of the things that you can use wine springs for. There are a few other things that you can use wine springs for but we'll get to those um, later when we talk about that category of items. Um, so yeah. Okay, so in order to use wine springs, the first thing you're going to need, well, I mean, you're going to need a wine spring, but you're going to need a, a way to wind it. So you're going to need the coil winder, and the coil winder is crafted quite simply with two steel ingots, a 2x gear unit, a shaft unit, and three base panels. And that gets you the coil winder, which is this over here. Coil winder. Um, and then in order to use the coil winder, you need a wine spring, which is really, really simple to craft. It's just four steel ingots like this. Get you a uh, standard wine spring. Okay. Zero kilojoules stored in that wine spring. So then what you can do is you can give power to the coil winder, and like I'm doing here, and put the wine spring in it. So right now, I am powering it uh, with... This is the exact output of a hydrokinetic engine, so you could just slap a coil winder onto a hydrokinetic engine if you wanted to. And I'm going to stick the wine spring in there. And now, as you can see, the wine spring is very quickly being wound up. And of course, if you give it less power uh, and um, less torque and speed, it's not going to uh, go as fast. The speed um, appears to determine how quickly it winds, while the maximum amount of power that will get put into this spring is determined by the torque, according to the coil winders. Uh, entry here in the in the handbook maximum energy achievable torque input so I'm currently giving it 16,384 newton meters which means that that will be the maximum amount of power that it will put into this wine spring so let's crank up the speed giving it a megawatt now I don't know if that actually speeds it up, or if the wi or if the coil winder has like a maximum um, speed. It doesn't seem to be going any faster, but I don't know. Anyway, we'll just set that back to 32. I I, I can't tell a much of it. I can't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was going faster. Okay. So uh, more more speed uh, will make it run uh, quicker. So let's just give it a ridiculous amount of speed. Yeah. Oh, and the coil broke. So um, that can happen. Uh, the coil can break. Um, the odds of the coil breaking goes up uh, the more power you put into it. So it's just I have one here. I'll just put that in there. So the more power that goes into this coil um, wind spring, the greater the chance that it, it could break. So you should definitely um, be careful with that. Why does that say 0.1 now? It used to say uh, 0.05. Oh well. Um, yeah, so just watch that because you can break your wine springs. They're pretty cheap, but you still probably don't want to break your wine springs. And that brings us on to the high strength spring. So if you're tired of wine springs breaking, um, you can go ahead and use the high strength spring, which is quite expensive. Um, so you need a regular wine spring. You need four steel ingots. You need two bedrock dust and two diamonds. Get you a high strength spring. Now, the high strength springs. Um, I don't believe that they that they break. I think that they don't break. Either they don't break at all, or they have a much um, lower chance of breaking. So let's just go through this handbook. I don't remember where the wine springs are. Okay, so we eliminate the chance of, uh, of, of breakage. Okay, so you can't break the um, high strength springs, but the problem with these high strength springs is that because they have such a high strength, they don't wind as much. You, you need more torque in order to wind these um, high strength springs. 16 times more torque. So according to this, I should, in a, a normal spring, I'd be able to put 16,384 newton meters into a normal spring. But because I've got this high strength spring, it should only charge to 1 16th that value. So we'll leave that in there and we'll see how that goes. So um, what can you do with these springs? Well, one of the things you can do is you can use them in a coil winder to take power out of them as well as in uh, a different location. So I have this coil winder. You can click this button and set it to output mode. Then if I put this wine spring in, 
the wine spring, the coil winder will use the wine spring to output 8,192 kilowatts of power at 8 newton meters and 1,024 radians per second until the coil winds down and you can see it winding down right there it's going down I want to say by one kilojoule per second but I think it's a bit faster than that I'm not sure it could be one per second it could be a bit more let's see yep and this is done so the high strength spring with even with 16,000 newton meters was only able to wind to uh, 1024 whereas a normal wind spring could have wound to the full 16 so you're going to need 16 times the torque in order to wind high strength springs but they don't break so yeah there that's the trade-off all right so let's grab the spring so that's one use for the springs and of course i can take this high strength spring put it in here but notice what happens not only do the high strength springs take 16 times as much torque to wind but they do provide a lot more power when you use them in a coil winder in output mode now I'm getting 32 newton meters torque at 4,000 uh, radians per second for 131 kilowatts, which is you know pretty pretty darn nice. That's a lot of power. So as far as batteries go in um, in rotary craft, these uh, high strength springs might require a lot more power to wind up, but they offer quite a bit of um, of power output, so they're quite nice uh, for this use. Um, so now let's talk about some of the things that we can use, uh, other things we can use coils for, because there are quite a few things that, that require coils. Uh, one of them is the spring-powered pump, which is basically an upgraded bucket. So it, it's crafted like this with five HSLA steel ingots, an impeller, a reservoir, and a liquid pipe. I kind of wonder how you can hold that in your hand, because we see how big reservoirs are <laughs> um, and liquid pipes. But anyway, all this spring-powered pump is, is that it is a bucket that can hold a lot of liquid. And you can see uh, down at the bottom there, every time I take a, a bucket toward the water out, it's using one um, kilojoule. All right? Now, when I pulled this out of this uh, spring power pump out of NEI, it was fully charged. If you take a look, the spring power pump that you get when you craft it has, uh, has no charge. So um, anyway, yeah, and the spring power pump can hold quite a bit of liquid. And if I grab a reservoir and pluck it down, you can take the contents and you can put it into a reservoir. Okay, now um, we've just crafted this spring power pump that has no charge. And how do we charge it up? Well, very simply, grab a work table, put the spring power pump in it along with a charged wine spring, and they will pop out the other side, and the wine spring will be at zero, and the spring power pump will get the charge. And so this goes for anything that requires a charge that isn't a block that will actually take the wine spring. You can you use the work table to um, add the charge from the wine spring into the uh, into the item. So that's the spring powered pump, um, and we've also got the spring boots, which are pretty darn cool. I think that spring boots are are, are something that you you might want to get. Um, so the spring boots are kind of expensive because they take a lot of uh, steel. It's steel boots, HSLE steel boots, two steel gears, two wine springs, a 2x gear unit, and two base panels. Gives you the spring boots. And the spring boots, if I go ahead, I got these uh, charged spring boots, and I've put these on. Essentially it gives me speed 3 and jump boost 4 as for as long as I've got them on. And uh, as you run around and as you jump and stuff, it is going to take out the charge and it's going to wear the challenge. You can jump a lot higher, and uh, you can sprint faster. I can jump on top of this building. And you can jump over fences. And uh, it's just pretty cool, these uh, spring boots. And they they also act as a shock absorber. So if I go into, um, get out of creative and go into survival mode, and I jump up here. Yeah. See, I didn't take any damage. So they act as shock absorbers. I don't know how far you can fall. I don't know if there's a maximum distance or if it just takes more power out of the spring boots. But um, the spring boots are pretty cool. So they let you run faster and jump higher and they're, they're pretty nice. Now, um, a, a, an awesome thing that you can do is that you can actually, you can get bedrock spring boots. So let's say you've created your bedrock boots um, you know, you really want the, the protection because these don't offer any protection, but you really, really like your spring boots and you want to keep getting the benefit of spring boots. Well, you can do that. Just put some bedrock boots and some spring boots in a work table and they will at combine into the bedrock spring boots. 
put these bedrock spring boots on. And you can see we have our jump boost three and our jump boost four. Speed boost three, I mean. And so now we've got the the protection of the bedrock boots with the uh, you know advantages of spring boots. Pretty darn cool. Okay, so let me go back into creative mode. Not that it really matters. And um, we'll look at one more thing in this video. There's there's a couple more things that, that use springs, but uh, we'll talk about one more thing. Is the bright lamp. The bright lamp is clapped with a glowstone block, three, four, I mean, four blocks of glass, and four steel ingots. And what the bright lamp is, is exactly what it says. It's a bright lamp. So um, if we fall down this hole, because it's dark down here, okay, and we place down the bright lamp, you'll notice it doesn't do anything. It's not providing any light. And that's because it needs a wine spring. So we open up the GUI, and if we put a wine spring in it, it doesn't matter if it's high strength or a regular spring, it'll provide light. And the, it'll light up a quite a large area. Its maximum range is 12 meters. So it will provide high strength light in a 12 meter radius around it as long as it, the wine spring is charged. So that's pretty cool. You can use, um, so you could, you could end up using like one bright lamp to light up quite a large room. Uh, as opposed to using torches all over the place or whatnot, if you wanted to do that, and you know, it, it, the the string the springs probably last a really really long time uh, in the bright lamp. Um, I just haven't uh, tested that. So anyway, that is uh, wine springs. They're they're very useful for um, carrying rotary craft power in uh, in item form. Um, you know, one coil winder winding them up at the base, and then you can unleash the power somewhere else. Um, just remember that they do have a chance to break, and the chance goes up the more power you put into them, unless you use the high strength springs. But of course, remember that the highest strength springs require 16 times the amount of torque uh, to put that power in there. So, I hope that um, this has been helpful for those of you who are interested in, in the wine springs and uh, spring boots and stuff. Um, so, uh, leave suggestions as to what you want to see next. Somebody suggested I start talking about the defensive um, blocks, so uh, if you want to see that, I, maybe I'll just do all of those next. Um, so let me know in the comments. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm Sutton Leach, and I'm signing out.